Hey guys, welcome to Kingdom Influencer once again. I am so excited and just so eager to share this word with you guys, share this instruction that the Lord has given, especially because we only have a few more days until the end of the year. So I am really excited, really happy about this word. Um, yesterday, um, every time I tried listening to a preacher or whenever I turned on the TV to one of the Christian networks, they they started speaking about two passages, right? Two passages, two stories in the Bible. And the one that the Lord has released me and has given me the go ahead to share with you guys is... Um, the passage in the Bible that comes from Genesis 30 from verse 27 up until the end to verse 43. But before we go into the verse and just, just you know, <laughs> allow the Lord to minister to us concerning the verse, I just want to take you guys to where it all began and how everything started so um yesterday after i had gotten the scripture it had really made my spirit leap i was excited and i kept saying to god god i know that there is more i know that you want to reveal to me the hidden things in this passage so lord have your way speak to me I am here to I am here to hear from you. I'm here to give you space to speak to me whatever it is that you want to minister whatever it is that you want to say. I am here ready to receive and ready to hear from you. And I went I went on with my day and you know still being open and just allowing myself to be sensitive to receive anything from God. So when I went to bed, I said to the Lord, uh, Lord, open up my spiritual um, eyes. I want to I wanna know what it is that you are saying. I want to know what it is that you want to speak to me. And as I went, as I went to bed, I was at peace. I was in a really good place. And I woke up this morning from a really weird dream. In the dream, I saw a person that I... That I, I don't even know how to say this, that I, the Bible says we do not fight against flesh and blood, but with the evil spirit that is behind that person. So there is a particular person that has caused a lot of strife, a lot of, um, a lot of disturbance in my family. And I saw this particular person, but to my surprise, I saw her with a group of people that have come up against my family, have come up against just, yeah, my family. Not disclosing and not saying too much. But in the dream, I was shocked to see why these two people were together, why these two group of people were together. And when I woke up, I went to speak to my mom. And I told her the dream. I said, Mom, I had a dream where I saw so-and-so and so-and-so being friends, just kicking and just laughing and having like a good time in the little world. And I was like, it's so weird because why are, why were they together? And my mom said to me, God is showing you that one, they both have the same intention to, to hurt you. They both want to come against you in the same way. And two, your enemies are coming together to come against you. And my mom said that I let that like sit in my heart and I started marinating, you know. I started asking God, God, speak to me more, confirm this word. Is it, is it, isn't it? Like, what is it? And as the day went by, I started feeling a stronger conviction that, yes, this is what the Lord is saying. That the Lord is saying that the enemy came up against you, right? He came up against you. He tried to block that blessing. He tried to come up against what God had said concerning you. And he saw that he kept on losing. He saw that what he was doing had no result. 
So now what he is doing is he is bringing your enemies together. Whatever part of the world they're in, what whoever they are, the enemy is bringing them together. And I got a confirmation to the word. Uh, I got a confirmation to the word. I spent the evening with a group of friends praying. And one of my friends said to me, uh, Jessica, the same way that the Lord is bringing his remnant, connecting his remnant one to to another, the enemy is doing the same thing. He's also preparing his army to try, to try and stop the remnants of God, to try and stop the blessings of God. So when she said that, it was an instant confirmation to what I had received during the day. And as the day was ending today, the Lord reminded me of the passage that got me excited, the passage that got me leaping. And like I have said, the the passage is in Genesis 30, starting from Genesis 27. So we see that from Genesis 27, um, Jacob went to Laban and said, you know, I have labored for you. I have worked for you. But now it's time that I take care of what's mine. I take care of my family. I don't want to be a servant anymore. I want to I wanna be a boss. I want to I wanna be a boss. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to work for myself. And Laban, Laban said to him, oh, no, Jacob, you know, guys, I'm paraphrasing, you know. But Jacob said, no. Um, because you have worked for me, I have been blessed. I can see that everything you touch is blessed. And as I was reading that passage, like I said, I'm paraphrasing. The Lord said to me, can you see that your enemies, can you see that the people that wish you bad, they can see my hand in your life. They can see my power at work in your life. They can see that everything that you've had, every good and perfect thing comes from me. They acknowledge me in your life. They know who I am in your life. They see my power at work in your life. So as I read, I was like, okay, God, okay, cool. And then as I kept read, as I kept reading, as I kept reading, when, um, let me read here, 30, 31 for, uh, 30, verse 31, um, Laban asked, what shall I give you? And Jacob replied, you shall give me, you shall not give me anything, but if you will do this one thing for me, which I now propose, I will again pasture and keep your flocks. 32 says, let me pass through your entire flock today, remove from it every spot every speckled and spotted sheep and every dark or black one amongst the lamb and the spotted and speckled amongst the goats and those shall be my wage. And 33 says, so my honesty will be evidence for me later when you come for an accounting concerning my wage. Everyone that is not speckled, sorry, everyone that is not speckled and spotted amongst the goat and dark amongst the young lamb, if found with me, shall be considered stolen. And Laban said, Good, let it be as you have said. So on the same day, Laban secretly removed the goat that was streaked, spotted, and all female goats that were speckled and spotted, everyone with white on it and all the dark ones amongst the sheep and put them in the care of his sons and put a distance of three days between Jacob himself and Jacob. And Jacob was left in the care of the, re of the rest of Laban's flock. We see here that Laban deceived him. You know, Jacob thought, okay, I have a plan. I have an idea. Let me fulfill this idea let me bring this idea and this plan into action but what happened laban deceived him and many of us many of us may be thinking or many of us may be maybe having this thought in our head that 
In the beginning of the year, I had a plan for my business. In the beginning of the year, I had a plan for my family. In the beginning of the year, I had a plan for this and this and this in my life. I thought this plan would work out. This plan was good. This plan was awesome. And as I was about to execute it, as I was about to put one foot forward, it was like the enemy came right in, came right in and stole it right under my nose, took the whole idea, took the whole plan. Jacob, Jacob wanted to still help Laban, but he still had a plan for his life. He still knew the God that he served. He was like, I can help him out, but I know that even if I take what people reject, even if I take what people think is weak, what people think is not pleasant, is not good, my God can turn it around. Sometimes that idea that people were like, ah, oh, no, that's nothing. You held on to it because you were like, I know the God that I serve. I know that God can do it again. If he did it in the life of so-and-so, he is not a respecter of person. He can do it in my life. But the enemy, the enemy thinking that he is so slick, thinking that he is so smart, came and tried to frustrate your plan. Yes, I said tried. Because the the devil can can take this idea. The devil can try and frustrate your plans, but he will not steal the vision. He will not steal the full product. He will not steal the business. He will not steal the blessing. He cannot take what he did not give. The, the, the devil is an imitator. He is not a creator. So whatever God has created in you, whatever God has put in you for you to give birth, the enemy cannot take. He can try and frustrate the plant. He can try and deceive you and make you think that you have lost it. But no, you will only lose it if you believe the lies of the devil. And I come right now to reprimand every lie of the devil. Any thought that comes in our mind that makes us feel that we have lost, that we are weak. I come and I pull them down in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. You are more than a conqueror. He that lives in you is greater than he that is in this world. He is greater than this enemy that tried to steal this vision. And sometimes I'm like the enemy. I don't even know if I call him dumb. I don't even know if I call him silly. I don't even know what word to use for him. Because as we can see here in the passage, Laban recognized the God of Jacob. Like what makes... A person think that if God has been faithful all this time, God was faithful to Jacob for 14 years. Why would God abandon Jacob now? Why would God allow Jacob to not succeed now? God has been faithful to you throughout the years. What would make the enemy think that by him frustrating this plan, this idea that God would abandon you. God says in his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you, that you are right under the shadow of his wing. He is your shelter. He is your provider. So what makes the enemy think that you have lost this year? No, 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 devil. No way. Because our God, he's still faithful and our God controls time. He is not controlled by time, but he controls time. If he could make the sun stop for his children to win a battle, why can he not do it in your life? Why can he not stop time for you? Why can he not... Why can he not control time for you? He is not a respecter of person. I want you to get this in your head. He does not love so and so more than he loves you. He is not a respecter of person. He does everything in his perfect timing. He does everything for the ones that are faithful to him, for the ones that hold on to his word. 
The enemy might have won the battle, but he did not win the war. You are still in this war. You are still fighting. There is still time for you to reclaim, for you to get back, for you to do what you were supposed to do in this year. And if we read further on, if we read further on, the word says that, um, which verse is it? So, um, so we read that on 35, it said, so on the same day, Laban secretly removed the male goats. And so we know everything that he did. And he put a three day distance between him and Jacob. But then 37, it says, then Jacob took branches of fresh polar and almond and plane trees and peeled white stripes in them, exposing the white in the branch. 38 says, then he set the branch which he had peeled in front of the flock in the water where the flock, where the flocks came to drink and they mated and conceived when they came to drink. So the flock mated and conceived by the branch and the flock gave birth to streaked, speckled and spotted offsprings. When I read that, I was like, Lord, like, you are so great. You are so powerful. Like, you are really the creator. Like, everything happens at the sound of your voice. Things come to pass because you are the creator. You are the creator. You are the ultimate creator. God had, God has given me a download concerning this, concerning this act that Jacob did. But I believe that this download isn't for this for this message right now. The download for this message is the divine strategy, the divine idea. Who would ever think that this that Jacob did, starting from verse 37 right up until verse 39, would result in him having more than Laban, would result on him having results and execution to what he had done. And this is what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying during these last days before the end of the year, I want to give you mind blowing strategies. I want to give you mind blowing ideas. I want to give you strategies, ideas that when you tell people about it, it will make no sense. But when you execute it, it will show that I am the creator. It will show that I am the, I am the God of this universe. I am that I am. Jacob had an idea. Jacob did a prophetic act. And when we read towards the end, it says, so Jacob became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks of sheep and goats, female and male servants, camels and donkeys. He became exceedingly prosperous. God is saying to you, this idea that the enemy tried to frustrate, this plan that the enemy tried to put a full stop in. It is nothing compared to what I want to download. It is nothing compared to that which I want to give you during this time before the end of the year. God wants to give you ideas that will not make sense to the flesh. Carnal people, carnal minded people will not get this idea. It will seem crazy. But it is in this craziness that the name of our God will be exalted. That the name of Abba will be lifted. God is saying during this day, during these last days, take time and come to me. Come to me and let me download what it is I want you to do. For what I have planned, for what I have downloaded in you concerning the final product. This 
download that I'm about to give you will make things happen. Acceleration. I hear acceleration. What took others to do in three months, in a year, you will do it in days. I hear the Holy Spirit saying books, ideas for books, divine inspiration for you to write, business ideas, business plans. He's saying all I need you to do is come and sit at the feet of my son, Jesus. Are you willing to take these lost days to have an intimate, private time with me. When you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. And when you find me, the Lord says, I will download what I have planned, what I have written. I will download the blueprint that I made concerning you, concerning this business, concerning your family before you were even born. Because before you were even born, I already knew everything about you. I knew who you would be. I knew what you would be involved in. I knew what you would create. If you feel that other people have stolen your idea of what you wanted to make, of what you wanted to create, God says, relax. I'm about to blow your mind. I'm about to blow the mind of those around you. For my ideas are fresh. My ideas are creative. I create things, says the Lord. I am not like the enemy that imitates things. I create things. I made you out of dust. What is too hard? What is too difficult for me? Nothing, 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 nothing. I am the ultimate creator. I am that I am. I provide, I heal, I exalt. I make the lost first. You thought you were lost. You thought you were at the back of the line when I was giving blessings. Watch what I'm about to do. Come to me and receive divine instructions, divine ideas, divine strategy. May your mind right now be unblocked to receive May your heart right now be healed from this hurt, from this disappointment. I remove right now this heart of stone and I give you a heart of flesh, a joyful heart. I speak excitement over you. Any spirit that weighs you down, any spirit of depression, I now cast out. I rebuke it in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. And receive right now. Receive right now. Be washed with my blood and be anointed right now with fresh oil fresh oil over you right now. The Lord wants to reveal and give you ideas, business strategies. He wants to give you ideas for that debt that you have to pay off. That death cancellations are going to happen in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Funds are coming your way. 
creative ideas. Two thousand and twenty one, you will rise. Two thousand and twenty one, you will begin. You will do it. Hold my hand and step out with me, says the Lord. I've got the blueprint. Don't try and beat yourself. Don't kill yourself trying to come up with ideas. Let these ideas flow from me to you. Stretch out your arms and receive from me to you. From me to you. Receive it. Receive it. New businesses, new ideas. You're about to take over. You're going to take over in your industry. Creativity. Creativity. I see color. Color. Different colors. Neon colors. The Lord is doing something great. The Holy Spirit is excited. He's excited. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you, Father, Lord God, for this word. We praise you, O God. We sit at your feet, O Jesus, ready to receive and ready to do what it is that you say that we must do. We come before you with an obedient heart, with a humble heart. We kill our flesh and may the spirit man in us rise right now in the mighty name of Jesus. But you will instruct what you will say is what we will do. In a mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be blessed, guys. I love you guys. Un beijo. Bye-bye.